Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Misner Media tutorial, we're going to be learning the basic ins and outs of DaVinci Resolve, one of my favorite pieces of software. DaVinci Resolve, uh, there's a light version available free online from Blackmagic Design's website, so there's no excuse to not be using it besides ignorance. So now that after this you won't have that excuse, uh, your stuff will come out looking really good. Now some things to know about the software though before it computes basically entirely on your GPU or graphics cards. So some laptops, specifically a lot of MacBooks, even more specifically older MacBooks, do not like DaVinci Resolve at all. So don't use it for that, but most desktops will be able to run it fine. Now you set up a user account and then you've got your project manager right here, which is where you do all your stuff from. Um, you're pretty safe to just kind of open up a project and how now we're getting into the actual interface. This is where I have to start sort of knowing stuff. So this library is your uh, drive library sort of. You can't just drag and drop footage in here, which is one of the more annoying things about the software. The software basically sucks for everything except for coloring and rendering, not H.264. So you just kind of have to bear through it for this sort of part. Uh, one of the things that confused me a lot when I was first starting out with this uh, piece of software was how to add more drives here. Because if you're like me, you have a lot of different drives. So in order to add more drives to the library over here, you have to go to DaVinci Resolve and then Preferences. And then here, this Media Storage area is where you can go and add another drive from, you know, my computer in Find or wherever that is. You can just drop another one in there. So then once you add those drives, they're there for the rest of your projects. So you only have to do that a little bit. Uh, so here I'm just going to access directly from my Blackmagic SSD and pull some random footage in here. I've been shooting macros of flowers, you know, for kicks and giggles. So let's see, I like this one. And I think this one's cool. You just hold down control and click and you can select more than one at once. And this grass is cool. And... I wanted to see how this one turned out, so I'll select that. And you just drag those into your media pool. And you'll see, just like in Premiere, or I think Final Cut does this too, uh, it shows that basically the clips are different than what your project's set at. So you can just tell it to automatically change your project to the right settings. Super easy, it's good to have that in there. So now we've got a couple clips. And in here we can double click and we can preview through. Let's mute this because the audio is gross. I mean, trying to by Street. You can see I've got gross, you know, I didn't clean my lens off. Oh, well. But anyway, here's macros of flowers. Very pretty. It'll be fun to do that. Let's not be in this window any longer. We've got our clips in our media pool. Uh, that's great. We won't go any more in depth than that because this is just really general. Then we switch over to our edit window down here. Uh, Resolve's interface is designed in such a way that you just sort of go from one to the next to the next to the next and then you're done and it's super easy it's great um, so here's our edit interface this is like you know premiere final cut media composer whatever you use it's just like that just not as good so you'll notice that we only have the clips that we pulled in before from our media pool so if you want to edit inside davinci you totally can i've done it before it's not the worst thing ever to do that you go you add a new timeline and you'll just name this flowers create new timeline and you can just you know do your normal edit in here say I want ooh there's a bug that's neat you set an endpoint you can play for a bit say that's good set an out point and you can just drag this in your timeline and you can say no I want some grass say in there out there just drag that in your timeline it's just super easy it's just like you would expect We've got this clover flower Boop, just drag that in. And now this other flower. In case you ever wondered, doing macro video when it's windy outside is no fun at all. As you can see from all this gross shakiness. There we go, we get a little bit of good stuff. All right, so now we've got clips to work with in our timeline. It's very easy and I can play it back. You can see very easy real time. Uh, one thing to note about the media pool is um, DaVinci is very selective about what footage it uses. 
or what formats of footage it uses. So your um, H.264 stuff is not going to fly too well in here. It's best to convert stuff to ProRes or DNX HD and then import it in here. Uh, I think it accepts footage from the 5D, even though that's compressy and gross, but it doesn't like it a lot. It kind of, it's not a great thing to do. If you want to not sort of dislike uh, Resolve, then I would recommend transcoding your footage. And I'll probably go over in a later tutorial mixed media workflows between Premiere and Resolve and how to make it so you don't have to convert everything on the front end. You can get your edit locked. Uh, convert only the footage that you need to convert and save yourself hours and hours of time and then just import it into Resolve and color correct it up. So we've got our our little movie here. You know, it's up for a Grammy soon. So before we get it into, you know, the nomination pool, we got to color correct it. So let's start with the simple clip. Let's start with this guy. Uh, the way that Resolve works is it uses nodes instead of layers. And... So what this does is you've got your source node over here. This has your footage in it. You can apply adjustments within that node if you want to. Um, it works. Nodes are kind of like layers. And for this sort of simple part, we're basically going to be treating them just like layers. But you can sort of do some different, more advanced stuff with like masking and, and things like that. But, you know, we're keeping it simple. We're going to, we're just going to make it very basic. To add a new node, you can go up to nodes add serial node, and that means just like you'd expect like a series circuit, just one after the next after the next, parallel node. Uh, we won't go into anything else but serial nodes for this you know, simple, quick tutorial. So you can just do that. It's also Alt-S. You'll be using that a lot. To delete, when you just click it and hit delete. Uh, if you want to disable a node, uh, one is Control-D, Control on Windows. I'm guessing it's Command on a Mac. I'm not for sure. I haven't used Resolve on a Mac that much or Alt-D to disable all the nodes. You can get it before and after. Um, so one thing you can do right away if you don't feel like doing much is you can just hit Alt-A and that does auto adjustments for you. So boom, punched it right up. You know, that's fine for most people, great. Uh, so we've got that, but let's say we wanna do something different. Say that's, that's boring. You know, you know, anybody can hit Alt-A and if we're going into DaVinci Resolve, like, might as well do something a little cooler. DaVinci has great scopes. I've got mine in, hanging out in another window, so right over here. So these are great for referencing. We'll mainly be using our waveform, so I'll switch to a one-up display, change this to waveform, and to pull up your scopes, you go to View Video Scopes, and then you can choose which one you want. So we're doing a one-up with our waveform scopes. So now what a waveform scope does is see these different colors in here? This is the luminance value of the green channel. So how bright the green channel is. Uh, so like, you know, the green's green channel, red's red channel, blue's blue channel, and then white is just the overall combined luminance for everything. Uh, so that is the uh, Y axis. The X axis actually corresponds to the X axis of the image that we're seeing. So you see right here, it's brighter. And over here it's brighter, and then over on this side of the image it's darker, and on this side of our scopes it's darker. So it's not a, a perfect thing, but it's a great thing for getting exposure. So I will just make this a lot more reasonably sized, and just kind of have it hang out right here while we're doing stuff. So the first thing we see is our blacks are not quite as low as we might want them. I'm not going to push them all the way to zero. Uh, this lift channel is where we will control our black levels. So you can bring those down. And you'll see a lot of people bring blacks down to zero, and that's fine if that's what you want. But we're not everybody. And this is, you know, a white flower on an overcast day. We're not going to get actually any blacks, like, you know, in real life. So we won't make it too dark, just a little bit. I'm just keeping an eye on this darkest part of the image, making sure it's just about as dark as I want it. I might go a little bit darker than that. So this controls the overall value for these blacks channel, this little wheel down here. And then you can also change sort of the hue of that. And you'll see our scopes moving around all over the place. Uh, and if you do that and then you do some other stuff and then you decide you don't want to do it, you can control double click and it brings it back to the middle. All right, now 
the next sort of thing that people normally do in their coloring is you get your blacks and you get your whites or you can get your whites and your blacks. At least that's how I was taught it. So we've got our brightest stuff up here and we'll take it not quite to the top either. We're not going for a super contrasty image. Just get it about as bright as we want it. Maybe a little brighter than this. I don't want it losing any detail because I really like the way that looks. This this texture in here is really nice. It's you know that's why you go macros to get that really gorgeous texture. And now our gamma is sort of like, I mean it's your mid tones, but it kind of like controls the the mood of your picture sort of. So whenever you bring them up, it makes it a lot airier and brighter and nicer. If you bring it down, it makes it a lot you know gritty and more Fight Clubby. It's Fight Club's cool, but you know once again white flower overcast day. We're going to make it look sort of like a wedding thing. Make it just a really bright, nice image. So now we've got that. Um, let's say we want to give it a vintage feel. Let's go over to our Curves panel. Or if you're in Premiere, you're probably familiar with Curves. If you're from Final Cut, you're probably familiar with the color wheels. It just all depends. At least Final Cut 7, they use color wheels a lot. And, you know, Adobe people tend to like Curves. That's just That's just the way it is. So if you first start moving these curves around, you see, oh man, they're all linked together. How do I do that? Also, right click on a little spot in there and it gets it away. So they're all linked together. That doesn't really do as much good. We've already sort of got our luminance the way that we want it overall. We just want to make it look sweet and Instagrammy. So what we do to unlink these is we go over to this little thing, uncheck gang custom curves. So now we can see, we can change it up as much as we want and we can do, you know, add some yellows to the highlights and make our shadows a little bit bluey, a little, a little more bluey. So now that we've taken contrast away from that channel, we might up our gain just a little bit and just do a little more contrast. So now we've got that sweet vintage look great everyone loves it we get we've just got like 50 likes on facebook for our sweet macro flower let's go to another image let's get a little bit more advanced so we've got this cool clover flower you can hit this little button to make the image loop and then so we can just keep it playing and see what's going on uh so now what do we want to do with this image we'll see it's pretty well exposed right now we'll contrast it up just a bit since you know shooting that cine gamma sort of begs for some contrast. So we'll brighten that out, blow it out just a little bit. You can just barely see some detail in there. That looks pretty nice. I'm digging that. But now, um, I'm, I'm all right with the colors. Increase the saturation. This took me a long time to find. The saturation thing down here, that's how you do that. Boom, super green. Look at that. It's clover that looks good enough to eat. If that isn't a clover flower, I'm going to be super embarrassed. But it was a flower amongst many clovers. So, you know, you take what you can get. All right. So now what we want to do with this one is we want to make the focus more up here. See, it's a little darker, so we're not really drawn there. kind of drawn in this awkward area. And I want the eye to go up a little bit more because my eye doesn't like staying in this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to move over to this, the window tool. And this is where we really start to get some of the power of... Da Vinci. We're not going to go too far into secondaries. This is just sort of a basic overview of, you know, how to move around in Resolve. We're not going like super in depth. So in order to do that, we will make this elliptical mask tool. So first, we will actually make a new node, Alt-S. Then we will make sure we're in this window, create an elliptical mask. And we'll just put it over this part of the image. So the tools here, the Little handles are pretty intuitive. These pink ones change the feather. These blue ones change the size. And this other one rotates it around. So we got that. Let's bring our gamma up. Sort of brighten that guy up a little bit. Nice. And you can see over in our node window, we can see exactly what's being masked off. It's, it's a pretty sweet little feature in there. So we've got that. You know, stuff is looking good. Let's maybe even increase the saturation a bit more here. Just really punch it. 
because why not? Then let's play. We'll see. It's looking a lot nicer. You can see up here better. Great. Um, so now, say we've got these, say, you know, we've color corrected these guys already. And then, say you want to go to deliver uh, to render this guy out. We've got it here, but before you render, you have to do a couple of things. The first is just do a select all thing, and that sets your in and out point in your timeline. You can obviously, you know, change this around to where you want it, but we want the whole thing. And then you're going to go up and you're going to change your render settings around. So individual source clips would mean uh, it would render each of these little clips one by one and then s send them out in four different clips. Doing a single clip is more of like a finished thing. You know, you've compiled your whole movie. You've, you're basically done with it now. Uh, then I normally render to QuickTime. Uh, these are just going to be normal settings that I use. Uh, I like DNX HD. Uh, if it's like a final one, I'll just do 8 bit, yeah, 36 megabits per second, 1080p. Um, if you're going to be putting this back in a pipeline, you probably want a higher setting, but this is just how I do it. You don't want to do any sort of compressed video from DaVinci Resolve because it, it's compression engine is pretty suck. Uh, I, I've never rendered something, a compressed format from uh, DaVinci Resolve, like an H.264 type compression, not this DNX HD compression. But one of those really heavily compressed formats without getting like really gross, really obvious artifacts. So I'll render out in a higher setting and then I'll put it in uh, to media encoder for Adobe or if you're using Final Cut compressor. So we've got that. Make sure our frame rates, you know, the way we want it. Uh, and then render job two. This is the folder that you want to render it to. So we've got you know, our, our crappy DaVinci, you know, thing in here. I really wish it would use Finder or Explore, whatever you're using. But it doesn't, and it does color correct really, really good. Maybe in some more advanced tutorials, we'll figure out why that is. But we're just kind of getting you through here. So I'll go to my Tutorials folder. I'll just put it anywhere, because I haven't made a folder for this project yet. And then Subfolder, aha. So then this will be putting it inside another folder. This is really great if you're rendering a bunch of separate clips. So I'll put this flowers. Cool. Render at maximum frames per second, or you can, you know, do that. And resolve renders like stupid fast if you have any sort of graphics card. Um, custom file name, flowers. Keep going through here. Now a flat pass is whenever you render your timeline but without any effects on it. So whenever you you know, decide to figure out what's going on, hit always on, and you're like, whoa, my footage looks like crap again. You'll know why. Just leave that off unless you want a flat pass. And then the last step after you've sort of done all this really basic stuff, once again, you know, super basic, add job to render queue, Start render, you'll see it goes, rendering at 80-ish frames per second, that's pretty insane. Like, granted I have like a reasonably fast computer, but still, like, in a normal rendering engine, I'd be getting like 30 or 40 frames per second with this. So that's some just really basic, super fast, super dirty, how to get in, move around a little bit, sort of eh, give you a little introduction to what uh, Resolve can do. This is just, Saying it's the tip of the iceberg is an understatement. This is like the bird that's looking at the tip of the iceberg from space. So this isn't even close to where it comes to. But for now, you've seen that this isn't unapproachable software. It's got a free version that has basically, it's got everything except for like multiple graphics card support, which really, who has those? And except for, also doesn't have... Um, noise reduction which you know who cares noise reduction sucks anyway just just light you know light your subject so that's all for this one super quick probably have recorded for many minutes still getting through basics of a whole piece of software it's pretty quick uh eat your vegetables have a great day and i will talk to you next time